and welcome back. I put a call out on Instagram whether uh, you'd be interested in me doing anything about baths. What products to use in the bath that will respect your skin, help repair your skin, hydrate your skin and not overly <laughs> strip it. He's just come in and it's raining outside. Sorry, this is my cat if you don't know him. This is Yogi. You're all wet. What are you doing? You have a bath regularly, don't you? Yeah, with your tongue. Right, look at him. Isn't he the cutest cat ever? Sorry, I'm biased, obviously. Are you going? Are you getting off? No? Gonna stay there for a while. Okay, let's get back to baths. And what happened was, in the time between me putting out my um, Instagram shout out saying, do you want me to do something about baths? Because I rarely have a bath. Um, they're more of a sort of hotel, cold winter night indulgence and I probably only have, sorry cat hair, I probably only have about three or four a year. Uh, I had a shoulder operation and when I had my shoulder operated on, which was 10 days ago, now, there you go, look, um, I had uh, decompression uh, surgery, a uh, keyhole surgery on my shoulder and they took out calcification and scar tissue and scraped down bone and <laughs> uh, took out a bursitis. Anyway, I was told that I wasn't allowed to have a shower anybody that follows me on Instagram will follow this journey because I wasn't going to say anything about having the operation and then by like I had it on the Friday and by Monday morning I was like oh my god I'm filthy what am I going to do I hate this so I leveraged myself into a sort of lap depth bath and leveraged myself back out with a incapacitated shoulder and I sort of washed my hair because this hair needs washing frequently I've got very 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 oily scalp and I sort of washed my hair with one hand and sort of rinsed it anyway it was a mess I think I lasted until the following Friday when I actually went to the hairdressers and had my hair properly blow dried anyway it gave me a complete new respect for people that have baths and I just thought this is the perfect time to test those products that I think make a difference in your bath. Make your bath quite a pleasant experience, but not necessarily a fragranced experience. <gasps> You'll not be surprised that my favorite bathing products uh, that repair, care, gently cleanse and look after your skin are unfragranced. However, I'm going to show you how to introduce fragrance into your bath routine and not do too much damage to your skin. And at this time of the year, it's also important because let's be honest here, it's winter, most of us are covered in kind of jumpers in the UK and heavy clothing and we tend to neglect our skin and it dries out. So part one is going to be how to cleanse your skin and relax and use bath salts cleverly. And then part two is going to be how then to get out and hydrate your skin in the quickest, most effective, lightweight way possible. Because I'm just as demanding of my body and bath products as I am of my face products, and so should you be. Right, so let's start with unfragranced, amazing things to put in your bath. And I have actually got a couple of fragrance things here as well. I'm going to start with two ranges that specifically create products for dehydrated, topically dry skin that simply can't cope with fragrance and can't cope with traditional uh, cleansing, sulfate-rich foaming soaps or bath or bath oils or anything like that at all. And I'm going to start with Bioderma. And the reason I've got this here, this is their Aetoderm and it's their ultra nourishing anti-irritation shower oil, but it can be used in the bath as well. And it's a, it's a, it's essentially like a cleansing oil, but for your body. And if you have chronically dry skin and it doesn't have to be all over, if you've got chronically dry legs, oh my God, this is so good. This is how I've been using this. This is so good to shave with. If you've got chronically dry arms, but also if you've got chronically dry skin anywhere, I'm very much of the opinion that whatever you use in the shower, you should be able to use on your face and on your body. These are all applicable for both. So let's start with a really great, reasonably priced, keep in the shower, could be used on brand new babies, right up to adults with clinically dry skin. And that is the Bioderma Atoderm, and it's huge size, shower oil. Uh, you'll get a sort of, milky cleansing effect because it does dissolve in water but it will leave your skin beautifully hydrated it's even a nice one to use in the summer if for example you've uh you, not that you should be looking after your tan but if you want to keep your skin looking glistening and soft and lovely it the only thing i would say about all of these things if you're going to use an oil in your bath try and get somebody to jump in straight afterwards which my mum always used to do and then 
the last person's responsibility to clean it out because not, oils are not easy to clean out of your bath and be careful when you get up because oh my god that bath will be super slippery i was super careful obviously because i was incapacitated because of my shoulder so that's a really nice one to use if you've got ichthyosis if you've got psoriasis if you've got eczema if you want something unfragranced and you want an oil that gently cleanses your skin you know that oil dissolve, dissolves oil all you need to do is rather than use a coconut oil or an olive oil or anything like that if you if you rely on a really great company who understand it they will manage to get an old oil to emulsify in water so that when you rinse it off it turns milky and then you'll just end up, end up with hydrated cleansed skin you'll never get that squeak if you're used to sort of and you won't get that foam if you're used to that sort of shower gel or shower bath or any of those kind of you know foaming things you won't get that effect this is essentially like using a cleansing oil but for your body and the other one i have to mention and i don't have it here but i will drop in a picture of it is i have to mention la roche posay now when i did some research on this i love la roche posay you know i talk about it the whole time it's a brilliant unscented range it's my go-to skincare range if you've got to strip anything back and you've got sensitized dehydrated skin la roche posay rules essentially la roche posay body it's not under body it's under baby again why should uh, a product be specifically created for a baby because a baby's skin is ultra sensitive and they have a range called lipicar baby and they have lipicar baby body and hair wash which is mildly mildly foaming but i love it you could put that in your shower and everybody could use it your husband your teenagers your partner anybody that wants an unscented really gentle but still a sulfate version of a body wash uh basically all of these their body ranges have 10 percent glycerin in them you know i love glycerin they also have something called la roche posay lipicar ap and syndet cleansing oil both sets of products both the la roche posay lipicar baby and the bioderma atoderm are formulated for chronically clinically dry skin conditions they're my go-to ranges for your bath however you know that I also use this in my shower and bath, and I've, you've heard me talk about this so many times. This is the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. This is the 400 ml, 473 ml. However, you know, it's an American company, so it's uh, 16 fluid ounces. They also do, if you can find it online, they do um, a litre version, which is absolutely brilliant. Stick it in the corner of your shower, get everybody to use it. Every teenager, every child, get them out the habit of using fragranced body care if anybody has sensitised and this is also particularly good for teenagers with the beginnings of breakouts. They can use it all over their body. It's so reasonably priced. I might use it on my face in the morning. However, you can use it on your body at night. And if you have teenagers who have the beginning of spots or breakouts, or if you yourself have body spots or breakouts, then obviously you've got the CeraVe, it's finally come to the UK, SA, that's the salicylic acid smoothing cleanser, which is basically that with added salicylic acid in. Now here's the way to have a nice relaxing scented bath, but not end up with itchy dehydrated skin. Now I've just taken this off my side. This is my all time favorite, I mean, look, this is my all time favorite bath product. Clarins do beautiful bath and body products. This is the Relax Bath and Shower Concentrate. And the way I describe it, it is my absolute all time favorite bubble bath. I just love the smell. It's kind of quite green, quite herbal, quite clean. I mean, clean as in clean scented, obviously not clean. Um, and I just love it. It's such a great product. It would be my absolute go-to bubble bath to use and it is a foaming bath product. And also obviously I like all my favorite fragrances in a bath product as well. This is Eccentric 01 body wash, which you can put in the bath and will bubble up. Now here's how to use them. Put them in your bath, as much bubbles as you want. Bearing in mind, if something is going to bubble and foam and create a bubble bath, it's going to strip your skin. I'm sorry, but it is, it just is. So what I would do is I would wallow around in those for 10 or 15 minutes, listen to some of a podcast, read a magazine, read a book. And then I would then empty out my bath and I would have a second bath or a shower with Bioderma or La Roche-Posay or CeraVe because I would never in a million years wash my bits with this and I'm not sensitive trust me I am not sensitive um, but I've said this before when I go to a hotel if I forget to pack an unscented simple or dove fragrance unfragranced body bar and I use a hotel heavily scented shower gel or soap I will itch like crazy to the point where I will have to go out find a local chemist and get an unscented body bar to be able to rinse my bits 
You know what I mean by my bits, right? Uh, and if I'm sensitive there, I understand why some people are sensitive all over. I did an event with Sally Hughes the other day, who's a really good friend of mine. Uh, she's got a, a, a chronic dry skin condition. She has suffers from something called ichthyosis. And she was saying she's simply, and she's addicted to baths and she can't resist having a bubble bath. And I said, my God, what do you do? How do you rinse your bits? How do you get clean? She went, oh, I have a bath, then I get out and I get straight in the shower. That's the thing to do, if you're lucky enough to have both. For me, when I was looking after my shoulder and I couldn't get in the shower, I would lie, lie and have a relaxing fragranced bath, empty out the bath, take the little handheld shower off the side, rip down and then wash myself. Um, so that's just for the pure sensorial experience of being in a nice bath. Also, can I just say, as I've said here, that is a face wash. Why wouldn't you use a face wash all over your body? And I'm going to say break the rules with things like this. For example, this is a uh, soap smith. This is their Camden Town hand and body wash. If you like a hand wash, why not use it on your body? And if you like a, a face wash, why not use it on your body? There's very little difference between what's formulated for your hand as your body. And what I'm saying is if you're going to do that first and then have a nice shower afterwards, why not use one of your reasonably priced budget face gel cleansers and use it all over your body? Who makes the rules, really? If you want to use fragrance all over, just don't use it on your face, obviously, but you can use a hand wash in the bath, you can use a bath wash as a hand wash, but finish with a face, an unscented face wash and then rinse it all off your body. The same is true also of bath salts. <laughs> now, um, I am a fan of bath salts when I'm working out. And the reason I like bath salts is because they're magnesium, which is um, a mineral that actually it's the only mineral that can topically um, be delivered into the skin and actually get into the body. So uh, you can use a standard, this is a uh, Epsom salt, which is magnesium salt bath. Um, this is the West Lab one, pure mineral bathing. And if you've ever worked out, you've got a bit of a bad back or sore legs or sore muscles after working out, magnesium is, it's considered when you take it as a supplement to be mother's nature's Valium. So it helps you sleep at night if you take it internally. However, if you take it externally, there is a level that certainly can get into the muscles to relax you. So that is off Amazon, bog standard, absolutely huge, 100% pure, pure premium quality magnesium sulfate. You can tell it's an F sulfate. I think it should be pH, but there you go, I'm British. Um, can't remember how much I paid for that. Can I just say also, you can use that in your garden on your um, ericaceous loving plant. Uh, so you can put that on camellias and magne magnolias and stuff like that, they like it. Um, because it's a mineral that they actually use to have green shiny, <laughs> It's a weird thing to start saying, isn't it? But it is, uh, to have green shiny leaves. Anyway, so you can use that as a foot bath, you can use it as a, an adult bath. You basically put half to one cup in a bath, um, and then to help relax tired um, and aching muscles, you add two to four cups, and then you basically sit in it, kind of a tepid bath for about half an hour. And there is some sort of osmotic process that goes on where the, the mineral can get into your muscles. However, there are fragrance ones. They're pretty unsexy, right? There are fragranced ones. These are a perfect case in point. Look at these. These are recovery bath salts, yoga on and breathe in. And what they are is they're the same Epsom magnesium salts. However, what they've got is essential oils in them. So you've got, this is uh, from Cosmos Natural here. This is breathe in mineral bath salts with eucalyptus, lemon and thyme. And if you put that into the bath, what you'll get is that gorgeous, as the salt hits the bath, the essential oils will be released into the air and so you'll be able to breathe in so if you've got a cold if you're feeling a bit snuffly or fluey the breathing one is really nice and then the yoga one is grapefruit ylang ylang and basil um i mean personally i don't think essential oils have any more than a nice smell to them i don't really believe in the therapeutic value beyond something like uh tea tree oil which is a proven clinical therapeutic value to be mildly anti bacterial, antimicrobial, I still wouldn't put it on my skin. I would never put pure essential oil on my skin. However, I totally understand that they, they kind of have a, a sort of spirit lifting, mind lifting, energizing effect. These are really nice anyway. It's a lovely company. However, again, I would get out and rinse myself down. I wouldn't need to rinse myself down after this. It's unfragranced. 
these I would rinse myself down and have a bit of a sort of shower afterwards. The other thing you can do is you can obviously use bath salts. This is another bath salt company. This is Bramley and they've got a really beautiful one. This is lavender flowers with geranium and spearmint. So if I show you, you've got the tiny little flowers in it as well. So you end up sort of sitting in a sort of spa type bath. That's more spearmint than anything. I can't really smell lavender. Again, if you have sensitized skin, be careful. However, if you want to wallow in a lovely fragrance bath and relax, and the smell of spearmint will certainly clear all your no nasal passages, that's a brilliant one to have. However, for me, I would rinse afterwards. The same with fragrance bubble baths. That's the Bramley equivalent bubble bath, which is uh, geranium, lavender, and sweet essential oils. It's a really lovely product. It can be used in the shower, it can be used in the bath. Again, I would use that as a hand wash. That's the one thing I don't mind having fragrance on my hands, but I would tend to rinse my skin off afterwards. They are my favorite bath products. Um, so basically a bath can never really be used on its own. You always need a handheld shower to rinse yourself off afterwards for me. And I know that Sally uh, agrees with me as well. And she has far more sensitized dry skin than I do. They are my current roundup of classic and new bath products that I like, that I've tried, that I think are really interesting to look at. I do think magnesium is a really important mineral to use if you want to start using bath salts. However, whatever you do, always finish with an unfragranced gel, rinse off cleanser, or do start looking at oil cleansers for your body. Anything that you see that's been approved for baby use will be super gentle on you as well. Uh, my advice with any baby product though is always go unfragranced. Next week, I will do what you put on your skin after you get out of the bath. And you'll not be surprised to hear, I want two things from my body lotions. I want them to be super quick to use, super lightweight to use and to sink in in seconds. Or I want them to have a level of actives that will actually make a visible difference to my body skin. I do not want anything sort of that's just lying on the surface of my skin doing nothing. I want it to exfoliate, I want it to hydrate, I want it to nourish, I want it to repair, and I want it to do it quickly. And that's what will be coming next. I'll put all the details of all the products down below. I'll break them down into fragranced, minerals, and unfragranced, so that you'll know the order in which I would use them if I was to have a bath. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing. Let me know down below what you like to put in your bath. And if you've ever found um, a fragranced product that doesn't irritate you. <laughs> See you soon, bye.